past seven months, I've made over $45,000 each month on one digital product shop on Etsy and I believe that one of the ways to make your shop successful is by studying other top sellers and in this video I'm going to show you step by step how I choose profitable categories and niches to sell in, how I create the products, how to list them, and how I continue to build my audience on Etsy for future sales. It is important for you to incorporate all of the steps in this video as skipping over any of them will only lead to creating listings that just never sell. The first step is to start with proper product and niche research. And while there are free ways to do this on Etsy, I highly suggest using a research tool as this will save you tons of time and I like making decisions based on data and information only. So today I'll be using a Google Chrome extension called Everbee and it is already installed in my browser and I'm just going to pretend that this was over a year ago and I didn't know what type of product or in what type of category I was going to sell in. What I would do is I would go over to my extension and click on the tab called Keyword Research and begin typing in various broad digital product search terms in order to see what type of results that I can find with a high search volume and theoretically low amount of competition. So if you, this is for anyone who basically has no idea what type of digital product that they are going to create. So some general terms would be something like printable. And what it's going to do is pull up the volume right here is the search volume each month, the amount of competition, and then it gives you a keyword score. So for the term alone printable, there is a search volume of 5,200 with over 5 million of competition leading to a keyword score of zero essentially. So um, what you're looking for is this number to be high and this number to be low. You could also use words like template. This will give you pages and pages of information here and the same works if you were using a tool like E-Rank. You would type in the most broad uh, search term that you can and go from there. So another one, if you wanted to get a little bit more specific, if you were interested in creating Canva templates, you would type in Canva template. If you're looking at creating things like SVGs, I would type in SVGs and start from there to narrow down the types of products that are people are actively searching for with hopefully a low amount of competition. If you already know what to create or what you're interested in creating, then I would just go ahead and start for there. So for this, I'm gonna go ahead and use my store as the example. So I'm going to go ahead and type in sublimation tumbler design. And these are the results that I see. So once again, and this is just due to current uh, situation, these didn't used to be have this much competition, especially when I started out last year. So you are going to look for ones that have a specific type of style or design attached to them if this is something that you are interested in creating for. And also just a little side note, this is where I see a lot of beginners go wrong. They think that they can just create any and every type of digital product and create a digital product store that uh, sells everything to everyone. And I highly recommend against doing this because this rarely works because you're just creating an endless line of products instead of creating for a specific group of people who will come back over and over again. So you are constantly worried about finding new customers and new types of products to create for instead of just choosing your audience or who you want to sell to first and then creating products around them. So. This is why I say uh, choosing a niche does become especially important and using myself once again as an example, um, I sell sublimation designs to crafters and small business owners and the crafters and small business owners usually make physical items to sell. My niche is very broad because it requires all types of designs and styles. Just to give you a few types of examples of some popular Etsy niches that 
can be uh, pretty popular and uh, high performing. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up Etsy here um, and just go ahead and type in a few, but the wedding, because they will need things like checklists, invitations, even tumblers here. All types of different products uh, can be found within the wedding niche. You could go into something like the card niche and this will encompass things like birthday cards, invitations, shower cards, thank you cards, Christmas cards. This is another niche which is similar to mine because you can create in all types for one specific product. Another one would be like pet digital products, pet portrait, and I know this is more of a customized digital product, but it's something that does very well on Etsy and the pet niche is very something that always is trending. Once I have chosen the type of product category that I'm going to sell in, I do just like to validate it based on um, the amount of sales and revenue that they're bringing in because at the end of the day, you don't wanna create something that is not already proven to make money. What I'm looking for essentially is a high amount of search, which are these right here. So that validates that there is a high search for it. And then I'm going to go ahead and validate it um, as far as the revenue. So um, what I like to do on this first page is click on all filters, click on star seller and click apply. And then I'm going to go ahead and replace this star seller with best seller as this is the currently the only way to bring up the best sellers. And then that is going to pull up all of the tumblers that are sublimation tumbler designs that uh, currently have a best seller badge and filter them that way. So it looks like only 4,000 results uh, with ads. So probably way less than that. And uh, here's one of mine, here's one of mine, here's one of mine. Away from anything copyright, trademarked like this person is doing, and you kind of get the point. So this is going to give me a good idea of what the best sellers in the type of product category that I am looking at are selling for. So then I'll go ahead and move over to the left and click on product analytics. And then how I like to sort this by is by monthly revenue. So I'll go ahead and hit this arrow right here and that is going to bring up the revenue. The one thing with um, Everbee that I will mention is that it only pulls in the original sale or the original price, not any sales that the shop might be running, which I can pretty much guarantee you all of these do not sell for $30, $33. So this number does need to be taken down quite a bit by whatever the sale or whatever the actual price is. So this will just give you a roundabout figure of how much each of these listings are make. And then the next thing that I like to look at if I was starting a new shop is checking out the shop age for the top performers to make sure that it is not something or shops that have been around for 10 years and that's why they have the type of sales that they're showing. But the next one for this bundle is only 15 months, so a little over a year. But once again, check the real number on this for whatever percentage of sale that they have off. But you'll see all these are one to two year mark. But right here is a six month old shop. Here's only a three month old shop. So these are really good numbers to look at when you are deciding if it's the type of product category that you want to sell in. Move on to the next step, which is to actually create and design the products that you are going to be selling. So what software you choose to use is totally up to you and should probably be dependent on what you are most comfortable with creating in and probably what your uh, product is uh, basically used for. For example, if you're creating Canva templates, you probably should be creating them in Canva. Uh, if you're creating t-shirt designs, I would highly recommend Kittle because that is what the platform is built for. If you're creating Tumblr designs or sublimation designs, both Canva and Kittle is what I would recommend. For this example, I'm gonna go ahead and use Kittle and Midjourney since I'll be creating the design for a Tumblr wrap. The first step that I would do is to 
actually find a it was a new store this is all theoretic um, since right now I don't currently do this in my own shop but if I were a new sublimation tumbler design store I would typically find a low competition keyword within the sublimation design tumbler category to create for and you can do this either by using a tool like E-Rank or Everbee if you wanted to dig through all of those keywords right here to finally find one but what I'm looking for is a specific type of tumbler design that I can create with a low competition and this is why I don't, I love everything about Everbee besides their little uh, keyword tools. So I'm actually gonna hop over to my other favorite tool, which is E-Rank and show you an easier way. You can type in Tumblr wrap and this is just in the keyword search toolbar up here. And this is why I like E-Rank because it's very easy to find something with low competition just by looking at the numbers and it pulls in everything related to Tumblr wrap. So as I've said before in other videos, I basically look for something green across the board, meaning it has high search, high clicks, high click-through rate, and then a low competition. So it needs to be green if you are a new store. If you're not, then ignore this part and feel free to go after something higher. But already right here, I see that the best one to go after with the highest search with the lowest competition. I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is go after this one called the Cat Tumblr Wrap, just because it's something that I planned a little bit out for um, and now that I want to create a cat tumbler wrap. So um, the next step is I would hop over to my Discord app and I did a little bit of research before and I wanted to make this little cat thing. So I wanted them to be kind of like little monsters but I also wanted them to be Halloween themed. Imagine, enter, and enter in this prompt which was large and small polka dots in several colors cat monsters. Spec ratio is going to be 2000 by 1775 and I just find that this one works best for me uh, when creating different types of tumbler designs. And these are the results that it gave me and I'm pretty sure I'm going to go after this one just because they kind of look like a mashup between cats and owls and it's something that's pretty cute and something I haven't seen which I'm gonna go ahead and hop back over to Etsy and just explain a little bit more about when you are creating a design or a product especially if you are in a competitive niche like Tumblr designs the rule of thumb that I say is that if you're going to try to compete, your design either needs to be better, it needs to be as good or better because you are choosing to compete with shops that have 24,000 reviews, 10,000, 14,000, we have hundreds of thousands of sales. So if your design is not as good or better and you're not competing on price, then there's pretty much, you, that's the only way to stand out in something as competitive as this. So that is why you are looking for keywords that have a lower amount of competition because hopefully you can start to see momentum and build up traction by going after these lower competition keyword sales. So I'm gonna type in cat tumbler wrap and kind of just see what the options are out there. It looks like there's definitely AI ones. This is a copyright and it's meaning construction. So we have some neon ones. This one is mine. It's just like a little cat collage. You have cartoon ones. Here's a Halloween one. Some 3D embroidery, some like more celestial mythical type ones. As many cat ones showing up that I do, but as far as the results, I'm not seeing anything similar to what I just created, which means I'll go ahead and do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and upscale number three, and I'm gonna go ahead and save this image. I'm gonna go over to my AI image and upscale this image. You will need to upscale most AI generated images just because they are created quite small 
and in order for them not to lose any quality you'll need to use some type of AI image upscaler there are many free ones out there this is just a paid one that I like because it is installed and then once that is upscaled I'm gonna go ahead and add this in Kittle so I'm just creating a new project and then I'm gonna go ahead and change the size to a tumbler wrap a 20 ounce skinny tumbler wrap which is 9.3 by 8.2 inches, click create. And then I'm gonna go ahead and upload my cats and then go ahead and drag it into here. Most of the time I probably would remove the background off of this, but I think it looks cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. And then normally what I would do at this point is I will add whatever text. So say this needed to say something, this is where I would add in any type of text or quote or additional images. So for this one, I want to add in some bats just because I want to make it more Halloween. So I'm gonna just add in a few little bats. I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that. So the next step would be to go ahead and download this as a PNG. This is already at 300 DPI, 9.3 by 8.2. And then I just go ahead and click download as a PNG. So the next step would be to mock this up. So what I am currently using to mock up everything is a tool called bulk mockup because I usually create 20 to 30 designs at a time and I don't have time to sit there and mock up 20 different designs. So um, bulk mockup will be listed down in the description below and it's very easy to use with Photoshop, but that is what I'm currently doing. And it's also helpful because it creates three different mockups, all of the ones that I need because I provide a blank mockup for my customers. And then there is the listing photo and then there is a flat lay image that I provide as well. So this is what uh, I already have it installed here. The first step is to make sure that my design is in the right folder. And if you all would like a in-depth tutorial on how to use and set up bulk mockup, definitely let me know in the comments and I can work on creating one of those. So I just need to go ahead and rename this. And then I'm going to go ahead and drop this into a folder called designs. With bulk mockup, you have three different folders set up. It's just called your mockups, which is where you put whatever you want your products to be mocked up on. You can have as many in here as you'd like. And then you have a folder created where you put all of your designs that are ready to be mocked up. And then you have an export folder where they will all wind up once they are mocked up. So I went ahead and added my design to this and I'm gonna go ahead and leave these other ones in here just so you can see how it works. But once in here, let's just pretend I just opened up Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and go to plugins. I'm going to click bulk mockup. And because I already have my folder set up, I have a mockup folder, a design folder, and an export folder. I'm just going to head, go ahead and click start generating. And it will mock all of these up for me on the mockups that I have in that folder all at once. So let's just give this one minute to finish. And once that's finished, they should all be in my export folder, which is right here. So um, it finished up the mockups. And as you can see, I'll have two versions here, one without my logo and little sign, and then one with. That way I can provide this one within my listing to my customers since most of them request them anyway. You can see it only took a few minutes, not even, and then all of my mockups are ready. So the next step would be to go ahead and add your design. And so this is your design and your mockup and your photo listings to your Etsy listing. And if you would like a more detailed video on the listing process of how I create digital product listings, just let me know and I will create one of those since that is a rather detailed process on creating a digital product listing. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next step, which is to promote your products. Many new shops think that they can just go ahead and list their products. And while that may work if you are in an extremely low competition 
niche or category and see results, it is highly unlikely that you can just post and expect sales in the beginning, especially in a competitive category like the Tumblr design. At least one social media account where your audience hangs out or is most likely to, whether that will be TikTok or Pinterest, Instagram, or Facebook groups, using me as the example, uh, many sublimation uh, crafters uh, are in Facebook groups on Facebook so that is why I chose to create a Facebook group as well as TikTok and I don't dedicate much time to it but there are a lot of sublimation crafters that are on TikTok as well so that is why I highly recommend you start something uh, wherever your audience will be and start posting your products. You don't have to be creating any type of detailed content around it. Simply posting pictures or the mock-ups of your designs is content enough as that's what I do um, within my Facebook group. I only post pictures of new designs and on TikTok sometimes I will either make a new design um, and show the process of making it but that is a little bit more detailed as far as content creation. I then also sent out periodic emails to my list with any new designs as well as new sales or new products. Uh, and that is why I continue to, or how I'm able to continue to market to my external customers for free because I've once again built those Facebook groups and email lists so that I'm not entirely worrying on Etsy traffic while um, in the beginning, that's something that you won't be able to rely on. So if you can just dedicate any bit of time or extra effort to your own audience growing outside of Etsy, it will be beneficial in the end. So there are many ways to grow your email list, but you can start by adding your opt-in link with a free design or free digital product on that social media account that you've created and offer them something free to join your Facebook group or your Instagram or TikTok or your email list um, to get them on that list. So the next step is just to repeat the process. It is crucial that you study your audience and the types of designs that are currently selling and trending and then just repeat that process with continued products and styles. In many of the design based categories like SVGs, sublimation designs, t-shirt designs, fonts, things like that, they are highly seasonal so always be looking at whatever the next major holiday is as that will be something that will be soon trending and you want to be ahead of the game so I usually say anywhere in between two to three months ahead of that particular season or holiday is when you should be creating for that. So for me right now I'm already creating fall and Halloween designs specifically because I know that that is a big seller in our particular category. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you are looking for a list of different types of digital products that you can create then um, be sure to click on the link in the description below and if you'd like to see how Etsy should just be the beginning of your digital product business then be sure to watch the video that will be linked next right here and that will be the next video that I have. So thanks for watching.